everyone welcome back to my channel i am so excited about today's video because we are going to be testing out sephora collections new cream blush launch this is called the flushed blush and i picked up mine in 01 cloudy pink so we are going to be doing a swatch obviously for you guys first impression wear test review all the good things so if you're interested in seeing my thoughts on this new cream blush launch then just keep on watching as is customary with all of my product reviews we are going to firstly go over product information pricing comparing it to other cream blushes on the market um intended use etc so this is the new flushed blush launch from sephora collection does come in three different shades. I picked up one shade because I have way too many cream blushes at this point. I have an entire drawer of probably like 20 cream blushes. So I just wanted to start with one, see how I like it. So I picked the soft pink one, obviously my most used color for blush. So I picked up 01 Cloudy Pink, which is described as a soft pink, and we will do swatches in a second. It also comes in 02 Red Berry and 03 Coral Sunrise, which is described as a PG Coral. All of the swatches look very pretty, true to their color description, all of which have a matte finish rather than like a dewy, natural, radiant finish. They all have a matte finish. It is described as a whipped cream texture that melts into the skin for a natural, soft glow. This weightless, easy to wear formulation blends in seamlessly for a natural second skin finish to give a rosy glow. This also has a smoothing effect that it says, so it's going to improve skin texture as well as just applying blush to the skin. So that's pretty cool. It does have dimethicone, it has castor oil, it has silica, so it is going to be that like smooth silicone slippy mousse type consistency rather than like a liquid blush or a true cream pressed blush. But so far on the Sephora.ca site it is getting good reviews. So in terms of product amount for pricing, this guy is $14 Canadian for 9.75 mLs. It says 9.75 online, but on the packaging here it says 10 milliliters, which is equivalent to 0.33 fluid ounces, which it says there as well, but it says that's equivalent to 9.7. So you're getting between 9.7 and 10 milliliters. I like the packaging. I think it's very, very reminiscent of Glossier, the cloud paint, which I have here. I pulled over a few just so we can compare. So this guy is the exact same amount of product, Glossier Cloud Paint, same kind of packaging, again, 10 milliliters. So there's the difference in packaging and sizing there. I will link prices down below for the other ones so we can kind of see if it's equivalent. I also have my Quo Beauty Featherweight Cream Blush. You guys know this is like my all-time favorite cream blush formula. It's so amazing. This one you get 13 milliliters, so you do get a bit more of product in the Quo and they all have the same type of packaging there. I also pulled two other drugstore ones just to compare. I have the NYX Sweet Cheeks. This guy is 12 milliliters, so you get a little bit more with that one. And then I also have the new Revolution Super Dewy Liquid Blush, and in this guy you get 15 milliliters. So you get the most amount of product in the Revolution one, and this one's probably the best price for the amount of product you get, that or the NYX. I don't really see this being comparable to any of these guys here. I have gone ahead and swatched it on my hand just on my own when I received it because I can't wait. I'm impatient like that. Um, and so far the formulation doesn't really feel comparable to any of these. The Quo and the Glossier are a traditional liquid formulation. Very, very liquidy. Um, lower in pigment but buildable but very liquidy. Um, the Sweet Cheeks is a whipped mousse, so it is kind of similar in texture to the Sephora collection, but very high in pigment. So this one is very pigmented, whereas from what I can tell with the Sephora collection, it's very light but more buildable. And then the Makeup Revolution is somewhere in between the two. It's a little bit like a liquidier cream, not a liquid, not a true cream, um, and it's pretty pigmented as well. So I wouldn't say any of these are super comparable in terms of formulation. That is what it looks like there, having 
blended it a little bit. Very, very creamy and moussey in consistency. I can definitely feel like the silicone, dimethicone feel in there, which makes sense that it's going to be smoothing and blurring on the skin because that is what silica and dimethicone, those ingredients are going to do on your skin. Typically, those are the ingredients that are used in like pore filling primers. Um, pore blurring, any blurring type of product is going to have those ingredients in it. So I think it's kind of cool that they put it in a blush. I've never really heard of a blush doing that for your skin, like an airbrush flawless type blush. I think it's really pretty. It's definitely a little bit more of like a warm toned coral pink than a true baby doll pink, I would say. I would say that it leans a little bit more coral, which I'm okay with. So let's go ahead and apply this to my skin. I anticipate that it's going to be very... Here, I can even show you guys. You can really, really kind of blend it into nothing. You can see there from the sheerness and the blendability, I think this is gonna be a good like beginner blush, especially at the price range. And to actually apply the product, I've just dampened the same beauty sponge that I used for the rest of my makeup. I have gone ahead and done every other part of my makeup except highlighter and blush, obviously. Um, and I only powdered below my bronzer, so I didn't powder anywhere that the blush would be going um, so we won't risk any like patching or anything like that. So I dampened the same beauty sponge, my Sephora collection one, my favorite one. That is my preferred way to apply any type of cream product, usually over my fingers. I just find that you get a smoother application. Like squeezing it out, it looks very weird. It's like a full solid consistency almost and then it blends out into like a whipped mousse. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it. In the back of my hand a little bit yeah it is really like a solid consistency it's very interesting i'm gonna go ahead and apply a decent amount just because i think this will be quite sheer just going to apply it right to the skin and blend that with the butt of my beauty sponge that is how one light layer well not even a light layer like you guys saw how much i applied i applied a decent amount so this one's really going to sheer out. You guys know me. I like a heavy blush. I will say that I really like how the first layer applied um, in terms of like blendability and not patching at all, not removing product underneath. But for me, as someone who likes a heavier blush, um, I'm not sure if something this lightweight and buildable makes sense for me to use just like on the day to day. I feel like it's kind of blending into nothing. Like you can definitely see it, Let's go ahead and blend this. I am going to work it like onto the nose bridge a little bit as well because that's what I like, my heavy blush. And as you guys can see, I also like working my blush kind of up to the temple as well. I'm just like not getting as much color payoff as I would like. I mean, it is a pretty fair color. Granted, I'm a very fair individual, um, so I might have been better off going for like the more berry shade you'll probably get more payoff with that one just assuming because it's a deeper pigment here's how we're looking now having applied like two kind of applications of product on each cheek very sheer very very sheer very blendable um definitely builds well on top i'm not getting any patching i'm not getting any like dryness yeah i would say that it is kind of blurring the skin on the cheeks which is a kind of cool effect not something that i normally go for because i like a heavily highlighted face cheek area and that's always going to emphasize texture and kind of do the opposite of blurring but I just like that look because I like to look glowy um so I'm not used to really seeing my cheeks like this but I think it looks nice I am going to apply even more I feel like I've already used a lot of product so I don't know if this would be worth it for me like it's a nice formulation I just feel like it's more so for beginners or for people that like a very sheer wash of color which just isn't my personal preference it's nice to have the option though i suppose i just like going crazy with my blush so i just hopped off camera to finish up my blending washed off the back of my hand so the product doesn't stain at all in case you're wondering which is good um i've looked up close at my skin in natural lighting in different mirrors and I think I really like this. I will say that it has a definite smoothing, blurring quality to it. Um, so much so that I almost kind of want to forego highlight today, which is something that I never do. Just because my cheek area and like this area here, my nose, my cupid's bow, the areas that I would typically highlight look very smooth and like soft focused and blurred at the moment. 
um hopefully you guys can tell through the camera i don't have any like smoothing filters on but especially like on my nose where i would typically get the most texture for me it just looks very smooth and flat and somewhat airbrushed i've decided that i'm going to forego the wear test for today just because i am going to my dad's and i don't want to have to bring all my filming equipment so i will edit this i will monitor how it wears throughout the day and let you guys know in a pinned comment down below you can ask me any questions you have there as well on how it weared how it removed i like it i think it's a cool product i haven't seen or heard of anything on the market cream blush wise that's comparable that's going to give you a smooth blurred appearance to the skin i think it's a really smart thing for a blush to do because that is typically the area on our face where most people me included have the most texture especially on the nose so if you are someone who likes carrying the blush over the nose area i think you're gonna like this i would love to see them expand the shade range i would love to see them offer um maybe a more luminous shade or a more luminous finish option like rare blush has their mattes and their luminous but as of now first impression swatching playing around with it i agree with the people are saying in the sephora comments i think it's a good product i'm excited to see them releasing a lot more stuff if you do have any questions about the product how it wore definitely comment down below and i will be sure to get back to you and as well if you have any products that you are interested in seeing reviewed on the market at the moment i'm kind of run not running out of ideas and things to film but i've noticed that the drugstore is definitely a slowing down its launches and you guys know I love doing new drugstore launches so while I still have videos that are on my list to film I want to be filming what you guys want to see so if there's any new product even from Sephora that you want to see me review definitely let me know and I can add that to my list and do it for you guys but that is everything that I have for you guys today as I said be sure to check down below in the comments to see how it wore throughout the day and as always thank you so so much for watching and I hope you guys either have or had an absolutely awesome day. Bye.